PK, I've known from uh, the beginning of what we would call our, our Dirty South shit, you know what I'm saying? It depends on who you ask, man. You know, to some folks, you know, PK is, you know, the guy that always talks like he has the right answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't quite know what he does, but you're like, damn, he does sound like he knows what he's talking about. I met PK um, in school, but we weren't in the same kind of classes because I was in smart people class and he was in kind of regular kid class. I went into super smart classes, got like my cousin we hung with. But, you know, we met in school, man. We met in high school. Frederick Douglass High School was a great school. High school somewhere. I can't even remember, man. I just know he just always had that mouth on me. To like a, a civil rights march leader, almost, you know. Always drawing a lot of attention to himself. He was in high school, though. I met PK 2000-2001 when they, was, they just started working on the new Young Bloods album. I actually met him through artists, uh, Big Floating, who I went to school with. He came and did a couple songs for a compilation uh, me and my buddy were working on. And I went down to the studio to play some beats for him. And that pretty much started everything. Oh man, I made a pretty keen uh, studio session I had with Mark Twain. Uh, with Mark Twain, really with just about everybody in the attic. Mark Twain, um, like I said, he was a member of the attic, Motown, Pretty Ken, Black Mike, Freaky T, uh, Cutty Cartel, uh, Sean Paul, J Bo, Step Daddy, everybody was in the studio one day. Uh, I had heard about Pretty though, and I had heard about him through Twain and through everybody in the attic because I met him first. I first met PK, I think it's like 1995, 96. On a Creole Road, 105 Creole Road. He was at an ice cream truck, but he about 275. So I like, nigga, you, you eat about the ice cream? You don't eat nobody no ice cream? You know how that nigga look at you, that one eyebrow like, nigga, you ain't cool enough to eat no motherfucking ice cream. <laughs> That's how I first met that day, for real though. When we was doing the Dungeon Family, he was a part of a group called the Attic Crew, which if you think of a house, we're in the basement and they're in the attic, right? <laughs> Same house though, not a different block, not a different neighborhood, none of that. Same vibe. A lot of important and smart people kind of came out of our class, and PK, founder of the Attic Crew, you know, helped shape what Atlanta music is, and, and Killer Mike. We're there too, so it was a pretty interesting mix of people. And he's been PK since the very beginning. PK now is, is an evolution of somebody you know who was like your classic genius knucklehead. You know, somebody who knew they had vision and and, and just assumed everybody should just follow it because they knew it. PK now um, he's actually developed into that person who can articulate the wise. You know, the why he does shit, he can articulate why it makes sense for you to be involved in it. He can, you know, he's now a more, you know, dip diplomatic rebel. I remember vividly that my first encounter with PK was not too pleasant. I met him through mutual homie, Jimmy Swagger. And uh, Ken was working on this uh, Attic Group project. And uh, so Jimmy gave me a call, I'll come over to the studio. Uh, to meet with Ken about doing some artwork. So I get over there, um, I had my portfolio, and I had this, this big ass poster CD answer this whole little presentation as to, you know, what I could do for the packaging and the promo. So I put the shit on the table, and kids, <laughs> the record just went skrrr. And I remember him saying, it was this old hip hop shit. <laughs> He's a guy that, you know, really, I guess it like guides artists where they should be going with their music, you know what I'm saying? From like guys that are starting off to either guys that have sold, you know, millions of records, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes like he's that voice that they keep around, you know, to kind of like keep them on track, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? They might have a great idea, you know, they might need to reel it in and PK is definitely that dude that will help them reel it in. So like it depends on you know who you ask, but for the most part, if you ask around the city about you know, who he is, people are gonna have you know something similar to say about him. Like, like this guy, he, he knows what he's talking about. He may say it loud as hell, but 
He doesn't know what he's talking about.